Well, good afternoon from Little Creek Bee Ranch. We have a, a cool tabletop lesson. This is a cool one. We're going to make up a five gallon bucket of a hibiscus tea. There's a pretty cool story behind this. In all the years I've been beekeeping, like 17 years full time, I've never filmed this one for some reason, and it's a really popular one. <clears throat> the story goes like this. This is a true, true story. It's been some years back. My neighbor next door, he's a gardener, and he's a real outdoor lover kind of person, and that's cool. And he called me to the fence one day, and, and he, he asked me, or he was really angry at me, how come these bees are all over my hummingbird feeder? I can't get them to go away. At the time he asked, it was springtime, so there wasn't a concern of lack of nectar, really. And I said, well, they're probably after the sugar in the feed. I said, if you pull the hummingbird feeders away for a little while, they'll probably find some nectar and go away. Well, he didn't like that idea. And I asked him, I said, well, what, what is the food you're putting in there? What are you putting in? And he said, my wife makes up uh, some hibiscus tea. And I said, what? You know, so I asked him, for more, you know, details. He says she gets some dried hibiscus flowers and boils them and puts puts a little bit in the sugar water in the hummingbird feeder and it is attracting more bees than hummingbirds. Well now, <laughs> as a beekeeper, my ears perked up when I went, what? <laughs> so, so I thought, okay, there's something to this here. So I began to think and I thought, well, you know, let's try that in a five gallon bucket. But my purpose for this strategy is to give the girls something, um, something for them to really focus on when it's really, really dry. The problem we have is that it's so dry, they'll begin to rob each other and robbing events are hard to stop. So when, when robbing events begin, it becomes a safety issue to the beekeeper. They'll surely tag your face up. If you, can, if you ever have a serious robbing event and you can get suited up and take a wet bed sheet and soak it in a five gallon bucket of water and then throw the, just throw the bed sheet completely over the hive. Ignore the bees, just throw it completely alive. Robbers work by scent. They work by scent. So if you can use a wet bed sheet and kind of throw it over the hive, put maybe some bricks around the bottom of the sheet to kind of hold it down on the ground a little bit. A couple of days, it's not going to hurt the bees that are at home. You're trying to deter the scent. And robbers, they can't smell that. And bees work on the principle of a work-reward basis or work-reward principle. If we make it really hard for them, they go, ugh, darn it. I just need to go find some easier pickings, and they'll eventually leave that. That's our hope anyway. But much rather than that, I would rather offer up some nice treat for them to draw their attention. Now, this is, this is open air, free feeding, and we're going to do this at the feeding station that's about uh, oh, 50, 60 yards away from the bees, as far as possible. And bees are going to come from all over, and that's fine too. My desire is, I would rather have you pound on a bucket of hibiscus tea, sugar water, hibiscus sugar water, rather than find my weaker colonies and I lose colonies to robbing. At this point right now, it's August uh, 10th, 2021. It's super hot, super dry. Today's high is supposed to be like 97. Probably the dew point is going to be 73 to 75. It's just like not conducive to get suited up and do any bee work. So I do have to get a bucket of uh, hibiscus tea out to them. And if anything, I'm probably a couple of weeks late, you know, so I'm kind of anxious to get this done. But I wanted to show you how we do this. And let's see what else. Um, it will take them probably four to five days within the week. They'll have a bucket down. Now this is bees from all over, okay? It's not just my bees. And I'm not necessarily wanting to feed them at their porch with this. That would draw too much attention. If anything, we want to occlude the porches. Occlude or shut down. 
put a brick on the porch, give them about an inch opening, inch or two inch opening, and keep everybody honest. In dry, dry times like this, we want to keep everybody honest. This is all preliminary tips so that you understand why we're doing what we're doing. Um, I mowed the other day, and I took the big Bobcat ZTR right by a group of bees just doing my normal pattern, and whoo, boy, they jumped right out on me. And they chased me off about 10 feet, and they go back home. And I made two loops around, and, and each time they rallied out and jumped out. They never do that. Never, never have had a problem with that. But it's so, so dry, and they can't get nectar as much as they want, nectar and pollen. And they're made to do that, so they get pretty peevish. They get pretty upset when they can't do that, right? So there is multifaceted advantages to what we're doing here. This is not just about feeding bees. That's not what this is about. This is about giving the girls a distraction, something that they really, really like. We really kind of hold back and only do this at periods like this where it's like, okay, the girls are jumping me on the mower. This is not normal. I'm not opening up any hives because if I open them up, here comes all this smell rolling out and now I'm gonna have attention in the apiary that I don't want. So this is a very, very clever strategy to, to use. Okay, so five gallon bucket. Uh, behind me to the left is, uh, is, a, is, a, is a bucket with about a quarter to a third of just regular table sugar. You can however you want to set it up. It's about a quarter, a little over a quarter. <clears throat> it's the lid that I think is the key. And if you look, there's a hole. And students say, how do you set the lid up? Well, the inside, let's see if I can get the inside just has screen material that's hot glued. It's not metal screen. It's a nylon screen like your window screen on your house, nylon or screen door screen. Not, not metal or galvanized, it's nylon. Just cut a square and hot glue it around. Make sure it stays down good, you know, plenty of hot glue. Let it dry, of course. It's not gonna bother the bees, let it dry. And the, the um, hole diameter is an inch, an inch paddle drill, and just zip you a hole in there. So when the lid goes on, we turn it, you know, when we turn the bucket upside down, it creates a vacuum uh, up in the top of the bucket, and the bottom it will dribble, 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 stop. And it's supported by the screen, and the vacuum helps hold or suspend that water, and it just dribbles out. They'll cluster up on here and suck out the water from there. Okay, so so that's the lid. It's got a rubber seal, rubber seal on it. So when we're done, we'll clip it on and I have a foil piece of tape and I'm going to put over the hole uh, for transport. For I don't want to slosh during during transport. And I will uh, put the bucket, I'll push, I'll roll up the ZTR to the back porch here, set the bucket on the deck and just tootle down to the feeding station. I'm not, I'm not carrying that big heavy bucket that far. Drive down to the feeding station, turn it upside down on two bricks. The bricks are on a pan, like um, a galvanized lid from an old outer cover, telescoping outer cover where the wood's rotten, just save the, the galvanized metal and you got a lid or a pan. And that's turned upside down. The rim of the pan kind of holds any residual water there. And I put uh, two bricks, they're gonna be spaced accordingly. And uh, the lid go, it goes upside down on the bricks. And I reach under and I pull the tape off and it gurgles down, okay? Pretty, pretty simple to understand. Okay, so, so let me set the lid to the side and talk about hibiscus flowers. This is pretty cool, hibiscus flowers. Now these are dried, dried hibiscus flowers see if I can you can save your own if you have hibiscus plants or you can order them there's a lot of choices on Amazon let's see if I can get close so they roll up when they're dry and you can just pluck them off put them in a can now what makes these so special the residual nectar and sweetness of the flower is an attraction to the bees. And this is what the gentleman next door was doing, but he was they were doing it for hummingbirds, which is fine. And uh, they didn't want to put in any 
red dye, food coloring, or anything like that in their hummingbird feeder. They're, they're naturalists. That's pretty cool. And they boil some up and add it to their hummingbird feeder. And he was complaining ferociously about the bees. And for me as a beekeeper, you just kind of put two and two together and say, hmm, they like that, do they? <laughs> so, so over the years, we've done this for this strategy of heat, heat management and safety and all, and all those things. So, so in a quart jar, here's a quart jar, I'll take handfuls of hibiscus flowers and fill the jar, tippy top. And I don't smash it down, just kind of tuck it in there, tippy top. Fill it with water, fill it with water in the microwave. When I do it on beverage a couple of times around, hot, I don't necessarily need it boiling, but it can be, can be. I'll take my teaspoon and punch it down and stir it. Now, it's, it's too hot. This is the one I just did. It's too hot for my hands to hold, <laughs> for, for me to just keep a hand on it. And it picks up a nice red, amber, purple color. Different uh, flowers have different colors. Uh, one bag here I have is pinker, more pink. This is a red, a red set. It's pretty. When I pour it in the bucket, it will be a, a reddish, reddish color. Might be a lighter red. And we have the strainer to the side. We'll strain out all the flowers. I get excited about this. This is a fun one to do but I'm doing it for multiple purposes, all right? Multiple purposes. So, so if you don't have any hibiscus flowers on your property, et cetera, et cetera, what I've done in the past is um, order from ameraherb.com. I'll even give you the number. ameraherb.com, 800-267-6141. Get on their website, sign up, put on their wholesale list, and I order one pound bag of hibiscus flowers dried. That usually lasts me a couple years or more. I know I've got a partial bag around here somewhere I can't find, you can't find it. Time for me to order more. Keep plenty on hand, ameraherb.com, 800-267-6141. Okay, and you can sign up on their website and order you a one pound bag of Hibiscus, hibiscus flowers, and, and you can make you some hibiscus tea. You can also use a couple of those flowers to actually boil you a cup of tea for yourself, which is actually very common. Hibiscus tea is kind of citrusy, pretty nice. A nice evening tea. So what we have here is the bucket with the sugar water, or the sugar. Let's see if I can... I'm going to turn you down here a little bit. Whoa. All right. So now we're going to mix up. Oh, you can see that. Let's turn it around this way. There we go. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. This is about a quarter, a little over a quarter. So what I want to do is just fill up a, a gallon jug, just water. I'm going to get it, oh, two-thirds, something like that. And my, have my drill and my mixer. I'm going to mix it up. And you can make two gallon batches of this in a two gallon bucket. You know, just leave that running. Now if you if you wanted to on, on a better weather day, you can probably feed quart jars of this to a hive for your use of hibiscus tea. And uh, when you do enough of it, your personal use, 
it does have a nice uh, flavor to it, a nice hibiscus flavor to it. Rather nice. It's not something I'd necessarily sell to the public. You know, you're, do you're doing it on purpose. But it does have a nice flavor. Or right, you can if you want to, but it's up to you. Okay, we're going to... The sugar has coagulated the bottom, and we want to break that up with this pour. So we're going to turn it. Five-gallon bucket of hibiscus tea. Pretty cool. And the bees do like it a lot. Also a little warm. It's a little warm water. And we'll have to film in a few days. We'll go down there and film all the action. <laughs> all the action that we've brought in. <clears throat> okay. Let's see how you... Okay. See. There, see the sugar kind of coagulates at the bottom. You get a bro. It's just a this is just a paint stick. It's clean, of course, you know. And the water level will go down. Sugar coagulates. You just you just help them break it up a little bit. Not laying into it hard. I don't want, I don't want the, I want the sugar all dissolved. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's let that. Sit there, I'll take the jar out of the way. Now can I do this? That burning my hands. Okay. Now watch this. This is pretty cool. Ooh. It's red. See the red on the lid? <laughs> pretty cool. Love it. Alright, let's see if I can get a towel. I'm gonna to have to do this. Wow, <laughs> that's still hot. I don't want to drop this in the water. That would be a mess. All right, let's see if I can. All right, what I'm doing is straining out the flowers. But I gotta have them All right. over the top. Set the strainer on it first, and then roll it. Ooh, kind of a dark. Dark red. <laughs> yeah, this is going to draw a lot of attention. Okay, now watch this. Okay. okay that's the first round. Okay, so check it out. We're going to put some hot water in, just hot tap water. Let's make sure it gets hot. Okay. Hot tap water. Get some residual juice off of it. And the hot water is going to help dissolve whatever sugars remaining in there. All right. Oh, the inside tricks, man. This will help keep the bees from pounding away on each other. Gives them something to work, something to do. I'm probably two weeks late, really. It's been dry. My high spots, remember if you watch this, I said my high spots on the land were lush and green. Oh, not now. <laughs> this bone dry, dead grass and cracks in the dirt now, man. Okay, so we're gonna drain that off. All right, very good. Oh man. Five gallon bucket, about a quarter to a third sugar. One quart of hibiscus flowers. Strained, boys, boiled or 
in the microwave till it's really hot. Let it sit. I'll let it sit for probably 45 minutes, 30, 45 minutes. Okay. So we're done with that, and we'll set that to the side. We'll we'll dump we'll dump that out later. Okay. Oh man. That. It looks brown. Isn't that weird? Ooh, almost black. Brownish black. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna draw. You just that's just like too good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no wonder they were pounding away on his hummingbird feeders. Okay. Yeah, this is going to draw a lot of attention. Let's do uh, some more water to top off. We're going to go up here. And again, my desire is to make sure no sugar coagulates at the bottom. Because we're going to turn it up and we don't want sugar just sitting at the top. Boy, that's good stuff. <sighs> we'll follow up with a video. We'll go down and filming, fighting and fussing and sucking down the sugar water. You know, let's see if I can get another gallon in there. Oh yeah. Oh, and then some. There have been times where I've, I've done two of these at a time, doubles. They just are so super, super excited. They're really getting after it. Okay, so I showed you one way of setting up the lid with an inch diameter hole and hot glue, and nylon, hot glue a nylon screen on the back side. Another thing you can do is take you um, um, a 1 16th inch drill bit. Really, it's really small. 1 16th inch drill bit. Put a lid on all the way down. Now, now this is without the water in it, okay? Put the lid, snap it all the way down, take your magic marker and just run around the lip of the lid. Okay, put the lid on tight all the way around, take a magic marker, put it up against the bottom of the lip of the lid, and run it all the way around. You're making a drill line. Take the lid off and then about every inch, drill a 1 16th hole. Take out the plastic burrs. It takes a little time, but the lid is solid. It's got no hole in the middle. It's a solid lid. And when you turn this over, the water will weep out. It will stop weeping. It will weep out those holes and falls into the trough of the lid. So now you have made a bee trough with the lid. We have a bucket like that but I can't find it. <laughs> like all my bee equipment, I can't find it. So you've got two options, two ways of making up a, a lid. Well, one of them's altering the lid. The other one is drilling 1 16th inch holes. Lid goes on tight, magic marker all the way around, remove the lid, follow your marker line, 1 16th inch holes. When you fill up the water, now it's going to slosh out when you carry it down, because or, or unless you tape it all, or whatever you want to do. But when you turn it over, it will weep out and fall into the edge of the lid, which is a trough, and you'll have bees lined up all the way around when it's upside down. Not a bad idea. Okay, a little bit more. <sighs> you can usually feel that the sugar has dissolved. You don't feel that gritty, granular stuff. All right. That's about all I want to do. Okay, now, this bucket, when it, it sits out there and the bees are going to pound away on this, and because it's dark, this is a dark color, I can see the color line as they feed down. I can see the color line. And when they're done, when they're really done, You'll be able to tell. You can feel the bucket's really light. 
you want to get that bucket uh, back to the house and wash it out real good because it would be pretty nasty mucky inside the heat and all that. So you just wash it out. Really. No, no soap, no soap. Just um, the water hose in the backyard and hose it out really, really good and keep it clean. I don't, I don't much let it sit out there. After it's empty, I get it right back up here. And it'll be stained red inside. It's okay. You're just, all you're doing is making a big giant bucket of hibiscus nectar. Kind of, sort of. The bees know what it is. That's why my neighbor was having so many problems with, of course, the hummingbirds like it, but we had all kinds of bees. Of course, he, his complaint was my bees. And I had to politely explain, well, they're not just my bees. They're not branded or ear tagged. They're bees from all over. And he didn't like that idea. So, so you have to be patient, man. Be patient. All right, so let me get the drill out. I think we're done there. I'll wash this up when we're done filming. So that to the side. Okay, lid. Here comes the lid. But it's snapping, snapped, snapped, snapped. I want that. I want that seal. You can see where it's not. Okay, snap down. Okay, here's my foil tape. Now I dog ear. I dog ear one end of it so I can reach under and pull it up, but it stays. No, nope, whoa, 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 whoa. Gotta watch my handles. Okay, the tape goes perpendicular to the handles, so I hoist it up. I pay attention to where the dog ear is because I want to, I want to pull it to me. You know, okay, you think it through. Perpendicular to the handle. Okay. And that way, when it's on the bobcat, just going down nice and slow. And if I slosh any out, I just rinse off the bobcat. I don't want it wet, sugary stuff on the bobcat. Okay, there is a five gallon bucket of hibiscus tea ready to go down. Oh yeah. You can uh, get signed up at uh, AmeraHerb.com or give them a call. Order a one pound bucket of, a one pound bucket, one pound bag of dried hibiscus flowers. Or if you have them in the garden, hibiscus flowers in the garden, you can let them dry and pick them off just before they dry on the plant and save them and dry them and do that, whatever. But again, this is not something I do all year round. This is something I do typically August and September when it's really, really hot and dry and the nectar is just almost not there. And I just have learned I do not want bees pounding away on my small colonies and give me more headaches. I just soon feed them something like this where I know I'm gonna draw their attention. As long as it's, oh, 40, 50 yards away, as far away as you can get. <clears throat> Occlude the porches, shut the porches down to about two inches, keep everybody honest, you know. There you go. If you like what we teach and you want to learn some really cool strategies, go to littlecreekbeeranch.com, the personal advisor program. That's where the good stuff is, ongoing coaching and teaching. It's a structured teaching service we created several years ago. It's really popular. Teaching sustainable beekeeping principles and practices a paid service, $29.95 subscription service. I always ask students, uh, make at least a, a three-year commitment if you do that. If you want to plug into a, to our coaching program, plugging in for a year and jumping out is not going to work. You're just going to, it's just, you're going to have more conflicts than you realize you're going to have. You're learning from a seasoned beekeeper. There's a lot to learn. You know? and the challenge is, is when you go out there and start learning from all kinds of different places, then it gets harder, more confusing. So I've always suggested to students, minimum three-year commitment. 
It's a subscription service, $29.95, but you're learning some really cool strategies. This is just one small one. One small. If you have any questions, give us a shout, littlecreekbranch.com. You can text or call me, 918-798-2251, and I'll see you on the other side.